The rift valley in Kenya conceals the bones of ancient creatures. The many skeletal remains of multi-million year old apes are littered throughout the region, and this makes it one of the best places in the world for finding out about human evolution. In the 70s, scientists digging for ancient primates discovered the remains of a very different animal. The truly massive jaw of an ancient carnivore that would have lived alongside any ancient ape that inhabited the region. The jaw alone was larger than the entirety of a lion's skull, and the creature was named Simbakuba Kafrika, which is Swahili for grey lion, although they were not closely related to lions, or any feline species. They were in fact members of a much more ancient group of mammalian carnivores, known as the hyenodonts, that are now extinct. When the creature was described several decades later, the media heralded it as a one and a half ton monster, which would easily make it the largest mammalian terrestrial carnivore that has ever existed being even larger than a polar bear. However, it turns out the animal was incredibly unlikely to be this big. Although Simbakuba was not as large as a rhino, it was still an incredibly big animal, and it actually wasn't even the largest hyenodont. It belonged to a group of African hyenodonts that were not only some of the largest carnivores that have ever prowled the continent, but also managed to cling on well past the evolution of many of the modern predators that live today. Hyenodonts are from a very ancient group of predatory mammals known as the creodonts that are not very closely related to any of the modern predatory mammals known as carnivorans. In fact, some researchers have argued their closest living relatives may actually be pangolins. The creodonts had two groups, the oxyanodonts and the hyenodonts. The oxyanodonts were superficially cat-like and were nowhere near as successful as the hyenodonts, going extinct around 40 million years ago. The hyenodonts were one of the first large groups of mammalian predators, spreading across most of the world and were very diverse, filling all sorts of niches, having some members that were as small as a fox. They were one of the most successful groups of predatory mammals throughout the Eocene and Oligocene around 25 to 45 million years ago. However, the rocks that hosted Simbakuba's jawbone date to a very different time known as the Miocene, where the hyenodont's dominance was coming to an end, and a lot of ecosystems were shifting to resemble modern ones, with the evolution of modern mammal groups like deer, antelopes, and apes, but also modern predatory mammals like bears, canines, and felines. The hyenodonts seem to have changed too, Simbakuba's jaw being significantly larger than older hyenodonts. Simbakubwa is only known from fragmentary bones, which is typical for many species of hyenodont, and so in order to calculate or estimate its size, we need to compare it to other animals we have a better understanding of. For Simbakubwa, the figure of 1.5 tons was calculated measuring its molars and scaling up using a model designed for felines. And there are big issues with using this sizing model for a hyenodont. One of the most consistent things we see across all hyenodonts is that they had proportionately truly massive skulls, with giant jaws filled with very large teeth. However, cats are almost the complete opposite, and actually have unusually small skulls compared with their body size for a predatory animal, meaning the model is almost certainly overestimating the size by some margin. To be fair to the authors of the study, this was just one size estimate, and the paper actually made several different estimates using different models, some of which were more realistic. For instance, their lowest estimate was just 280 kilograms, which would make Simbakuba around the size of a larger than average Siberian tiger. However, although this model is much more likely to be closer to the true size of the animal, it is still not without criticism, because the sizing model was based on carnivorans greater than 100 kilograms, and carnivorans were not closely related to hyenodonts, and have a diverse set of body proportions from seals to cats. Simbakuba lived during an interesting time in hyenodont evolution, where fossil evidence seems to show they were adapting to get larger, and the smaller forms, like the wolf-sized hyenodon, were being replaced by carnivoran species. Although this doesn't mean they were being outcompeted, and carnivorans may just have simply been benefiting from their disappearance. Simbakuba was actually just one member of a whole group of giant African hyenodonts named the hyenolorines, and it wasn't even the largest species. Another hyena lorine named Megistotherium osteolastes has an even larger jaw, but unlike Simbakuba and many hyenodonts, some bones from its body have also managed to survive through time, including leg bones, which often produce more accurate size estimates as they actually have to bear the animal's weight. Megistotherium was most likely over 3 meters long and weighed up to half a ton, and Simbakuba was maybe 20% smaller. 
So Simbacuba was not the largest mammalian land carnivore to ever live, and the largest hyena lore and hyenodonts weren't the largest either, as they were probably still smaller than the largest polar bears today. However, as you can see in this video, polar bears are very unusual animals that eat an almost entirely marine animal diet, and this unique lifestyle make comparisons like this unfair. If we don't count polar bears, the only other animals that are comparable are either the largest saber-toothed cats or the largest amphicyons, that were giant carnivoran predators most closely related to bears and canids, that lived in the Miocene too. It's possible that around half a ton might just be pushing the physical limit of how big carnivorous land mammals can actually get. Interestingly, these giant hyenodonts seem to have actually reversed the trend of hyenodont decline, and they represent the last big push of these ancient mammals, becoming very successful when the other hyenodonts were dying out. Hyenodont evolution is mysterious, but it is thought they evolved in either Europe or Asia, and then spread into North America and Africa from there. Africa was not connected to the rest of the world at this point, and had a noticeable difference in wildlife because of this. The hyena lorines wider family probably first evolved outside of Africa, but when they found themselves on the continent, started evolving differently to their relatives in other parts of the world. For instance, hyenodon legs are digitigrade, being extremely similar to the legs of canids, like wolves, where they would have walked on their toes, but hyena lorines seem to have had a foot that was somewhere in between a wolf and an animal like a bear that places their heel on the ground. Eventually, the African hyena lorines produced the largest hyenodonts known to have existed. Another hyena lorine, and a close relative of Simbacuba and Megistotherium, named Hyena loris sulzuri, is the most well studied of these creatures, as it is known from multiple fossils, some of which are known outside of Africa in Europe and Asia. Hyena loris sulzuri was slightly smaller than its relatives, but still very big, probably around the size of a very large tiger, and unlike the other large hyena lorines, seemed to have moved outside of Africa. There are fossils of this creature spread from Namibia to France, where hyenodon had actually most likely gone extinct by this point, so these giant African hyenodonts may have been so successful that they recolonized the continent. The hyena lorines were the largest and last lived of the hyenodonts, probably going extinct around 9 million years ago. Why they went extinct isn't fully understood, but it may have been that they just weren't as adaptable as the smaller carnivorans to changing ecosystems. Throughout the Cenozoic, the time after the dinosaurs, the world was going through a cooling period, where although there was some fluctuation, the general trend for tens of millions of years was the Earth was getting colder, eventually culminating in the Ice Age. This caused many environmental impacts, most notably was the spread of large grassland ecosystems. Study of all known hyenodonts has shown the group was probably almost entirely carnivorous, which would have made them less adaptive to these changing times. Along with the hyenodonts, amphicyons, the giant carnivorans, also went extinct at a similar time, whereas large omnivorous carnivorans, like bears, survived. So although the hyenodonts evolving into massive predators may have helped them for a while, in the end, like most giant predators, it also made them very vulnerable to changing environments. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the large contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.